Edward Snowden's leaks explain how AI surveillance took over our privacy in just a few gripping minutes. We unpack the full story of Edward Snowden, the man who lifted the veil on global surveillance and triggered a digital reckoning. But this isn't just about leaks and headlines. It's about you. How did one 29-year-old contract to gain access to the NSA's deepest secrets? What exactly is PRISM, x Score, and the AI Panopticon watching your online life? Was Snowden a hero, traitor, or something far more complicated? You'll discover how mass metadata collection turned into silent profiling, how AI is now flagging citizens before they act, and the haunting stories of innocent people falsely accused by flawed algorithms. From secret court orders to smart home surveillance, this video lays it all out. No jargon, no fluff, just the critical truth of how we got here and what you can still do to protect your digital freedom. By the end, you'll never look at your phone, your search history, or your online privacy the same way again. Paul Cyber signing in file 042. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and informational purposes only. It is based on publicly available sources and historical records. The views presented aim to promote digital awareness and responsible online behavior. We do not endorse or encourage any illegal activities. All trademarks and names are the property of their respective owners. Let's flip through the files. In 2013, a single man shook the world's digital conscience. His revelations would expose the hidden lens watching us all. But was it protection or power beyond control? I'm Paul from Paul Cyberfiles, and today, we're diving into the tangled story of Edward Snowden. We'll unravel how mass surveillance became our reality and the rise of a new digital panopticon powered by AI. But be warned, what you're about to see might change how you think about your privacy forever. Stick around, because the moment Snowden's files hit the press, the game changed. But did he save us or endanger us? Edward Snowden explained in minutes, what is AI panopticon? How mass surveillance became reality. In an age where every message, search, and call can be recorded, leaked, and analyzed, how did we get here? The story begins after September 11, 2001. Governments feared new threats. Terrorists using global networks. So they built vast surveillance systems. But growing from intelligence monitoring to collecting billions of data points. Programs like Carnivore, Echelon, Prism, names whispered in briefings but remain unknown to most until a 29-year-old contractor in Hawaii decided they couldn't stay hidden. That contractor? Edward Snowden. Snowden's early life and journey to NSA. Born in 1983 in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, Edward Snowden grew up in a family of public servants, agents, military technicians. By 14, he was building computer networks and hacking games. At 20, he joined the U.S. Army Reserve, but after an injury, pivoted. Between 2006 to 2009, he worked at Dell and CIA and then NSA as a contractor. Over time, he saw documents showing programs scooping up the metadata of every phone call and online relationships without warrants. He once said, I couldn't allow the U.S. government to destroy privacy, internet freedom, and basic liberties. But this wasn't a movie pitch. It was a path he walked. On May 20th, 2013, Snowden executed the plan, but what he revealed would live on in leaks, headlines, and a fight over freedom itself. Snowden fled to Hong Kong, then released Docs of Guardian and the Washington Post. First drop? Prism, a secret surveillance program tapping into Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Overnight, the world asked, was I being watched? But metadata was equally shocking. Trillions of call records mapping your life without content. Who talked to whom, when and where. No need to pick up the phone. Just look at the logs. Snowden also revealed x Score, an intrusive tool collecting nearly everything you do online, from emails to browsing to YouTube videos. Leaked as court testimony, we learned that even heads of state like Angela Merkel were targets. In late 2013, Germany discovered its chancellor's calls were tapped. The world was watching the watchers. If you're learning something new, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss our next breakdown on global cyber policy. And trust me, 
The next section gets darker. Governments scrambled. The USA Freedom Act, introduced in 2014, attempted to curb metadata collection. But was it enough? European nations reacted. Brazil threatened U.S. data. Google and Yahoo began encrypting by default. YouTube videos about how to stay off the grid saw spikes. Yet public opinion was divided. A Pew survey found 56% saw Snowden as a whistleblower, while 29% called him a traitor. Former President Obama called the leaks help spur needed reforms, though he still called Snowden a traitor who didn't have a lawful right to do what he did. As the surveillance curtain lifted, a new threat appeared, not just governments, but tech itself. AI watching your every click. The digital panopticon was waking. The AI panopticon, what is it? The traditional panopticon was an 18th century prison design. One guard, all prisoners watched, so you behave even if no one's looking. Modern version? Every phone, smart home device, credit card, feeding streams of data. Enter AI, algorithms that learn your patterns, predict your actions and flag anomalies before you act. It's not fiction. In China, systems score citizens on behavior. In Western countries, suspicion of AI predictive algorithms in job applications and insurance. But everything began with metadata and bulk collection. Snowden's leaks showed the raw feed. Now, governments and corporations collect 510 years of your online footprint. AI isn't just mapping behavior. It's monetizing and controlling it. So what can you do? We all have a role in digital literacy and civic awareness. We need public rules, personal habits, and tools built to protect, not just profit. But some real stories show how deep the panopticon goes, like the chilling case of the wrongfully flagged student. In 2017, a student in the UK was flagged by AI for suspicious keywords in his search history. His academic scholarship was pulled, family embarrassed, even though the words were about a play. He didn't buy weapons. The AI just got it wrong and no human reviewed it. The family separated at the border. In the US, border apps flagged immigrants based on social profiles. One family from Latin America was detained, all due to an algorithm's risk score. They had clean records. Algorithms fed on metadata, not truth. The innocent under surveillance. In 2018, a man in Sweden was held for months because CCTV facial recognition systems misidentified him as a fugitive. The system saw a match, no human second guessing. These aren't isolated. Across dozens of countries, weak AI, built on Snowden-style data, is deciding trust and threat. If these stories alarm you, hit subscribe and turn on that bell. We'll unpack global data rights and next-gen surveillance in our next episode. But first, there's one more twist. Snowden remains in exile in Russia since 2013, under temporary asylum. He's accepted interviews via secure video, wrote memoirs like Permanent Record. He's also joined boards of digital freedom groups. His legacy? The surveillance self-awareness era. Today, organizations like the EFF push end-to-end -end cryptography. Companies use TLS and promote zero-knowledge architectures. Apple started encrypting iMessage. The industry pivoted away from mass data harvesting. Though critics say cookie policies and micro-tracking continue to trend. Edward Snowden wasn't perfect, but he reminded us privacy isn't obsolete. It's essential. In a world where AI panopticons can judge us before we act, our digital lives need protection. We're at a crossroads. Fight for transparency, demand regulation, choose open source and privacy forward tools, or accept an opaque future. Now I want to hear from you. What surprised you most? Have you taken steps to protect your online life? Let me know in the comments. And if you stood up for your privacy, you're part of a movement. If this video helped you think twice about your data, hit like. It helps our channel grow. Don't forget to subscribe for more cyber awareness stories and tap the bell to stay updated. Share this video with one person who needs a reminder that privacy isn't paranoia, it's power. Until next time, I'm Paul Cyber. Stay safe, stay informed in the digital age.